Okay, everybody. Hi. Um, welcome to Tips from the Top. It's our last Tips from the Top for 2017. This year has been a whirlwind um, and flown by. Um, but the, you know, the, the, the year is not quite over yet. December is not quite over. We still have two weeks left. And um, I love this topic that we're going to talk about today because you guys might get some great ideas for what you can do to keep your business going even over the next couple of weeks. Um, our special guest today is Marla Burry. Um, Marla is originally from North Dakota. Hey, Marla. Hi, everyone. She's a fellow Midwesterner. Um, she's originally from North Dakota, but she's lived in Kansas for the last 30 years. Um, Marla was an early childhood special educator for 20 years, so she's a super good teacher. I always love hearing Marla speak. Um, she's got two sons. She's got a 20-year-old and an 18-year-old who are both going to her alma mater right now at Kansas State University. Um, and she joined Via One Hope a little over two years ago, and um, she is one of our founding leaders, so one of the first 50 people to reach the title of director. Um, and she is a senior director now. Uh, with us. She earned our very first incentive trip to Cancun. And Marla, you've already earned Puerto Vallarta too, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yay! Awesome! Yay. So this girl knows how to work her business. Uh, but today we are going to talk about um, some really great tips that Marla has on sort of a non-traditional way. As you guys know, we like to do in-home tasting events, uh, but social media and virtual parties are a thing um, too. And so Marla's got some really great tips that she wants to share with us on how to have successful uh, Facebook parties. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Marla. Thanks, Katie. Appreciate you. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm really nervous as usual, but um, I'm excited you're here and you want to um, learn about this topic a little bit more. Um, I've had one really good successful virtual party on Facebook, and then I've had one that was a flop. So I kind of want to talk about each one and what made it um, a success for the first one. Um, I think the very, very first thing you need to do is ID your hostess and make sure that they are vested in hosting this party as much as you are. Um, my first successful one, uh, my friend uh, has a mother-in-law with breast cancer. So we did it in October. It was around um, Susan G. Komen. And she really wanted to contribute in honor of her mother-in-law. Um, so she was very vested in it. So she and I talked a lot together. I host coach um, with her over and over, you, you know, Facebooking, talking one-on-one. -on -one. We got together for a glass of wine, which is always nice too. Um, and she was very, very into it. Now with her, she already was a hostess for me in the past. So she knew our wines. She knew what she liked. She knew what she didn't like. Um, she knew all the cause partners um, and shared with everybody on the invite list what she was passionate about and why One Hope was important to her. So she was very vested. Now the second one that I did that wasn't very successful my hostess wasn't as invested, which was kind of sad because it was, it could have been really big if she would have helped me out a little bit more. Um, so always, always, always host coach, um, your hostess hosts and, you know, make it positive. You know, she didn't have to buy any more wine because she already knew about it but she still got to earn rewards in the back office. So that was a plus for her too. She loves our brute. She loves the Cabernet. So um, that was important to her as well. Um, let's see. Make sure with your hostess that you guys set a goal and make it known on that page what that goal is and what it's gonna take to reach that goal. You know, how many gift sets, how many glitter bottles, how many case for a cause. Um, talk about that with your host and then also talk about it on the page. 
Um, so what we did and how we did this was she, we co-hosted so I could invite people as well and she could invite all her um, contacts and she introduced me and why it was important and what their um, fundraising goal was. And then I would go on, I introduced myself, what I did, how long I've been with One Hope and how I knew her. Um, then what I did was start um, just talking about um, what One Hope does and showed the impact that One Hope had up to date, um, which piqued people's interest. And how do you do that? What percentages, you know, the conversation started. Um, you know, my role was basically to get the people to purchase, to give back. So I needed to make sure and um, describe the varietals to a T so that people could taste it without tasting it. So they would have it in their mind. You know, they like the smokiness or they like the um, berry front. You know, I would have to describe it to a T. And with that bridal, I also um, talked about the cause partner and the impact we've made with that cause partner, as well as the dot pattern. So I do one or two of those a night until we got through the core. But in between there, I would find a gift box and throw in a gift box and talk about the impact that the gift box made. Um, I know one day I went over to Megan Armstrong's and she had all her glitters out. So we talked about all the glitter bottles and, you know, described them, described our brute. Um, and then she had the two Elway wines as well. So we got to talk a little bit about um, the different reserve varietals. Um, I would definitely kind of do it in segments, do the cores, and then do the reserves and the glitters, the gift boxes. And during that time, my hostess was either commenting on um, what, what I was doing. Um, she would also like put in little gifs. Um, she would put in little graphics. She would put in her story about um, her mother-in-law and share some of her personal experiences and why she wanted to do this. Um, and, you know, it was really, really a good one. And, you know, we held it open for three weeks. Um, for three weeks, a lot of time. Um, after two weeks, I PM'd most of the invitees and said, hey, we're going to close the party in, the, in a week. What can I get for you to order and post the link? Or do you have any questions? So then I would try and get um, engaged in conversation with the invitees as well. Um, I always thank them um, for their time, for watching. Um, I did live videos, um, you know, just trying to connect a little bit more, keep them engaged, um, and then follow up with them. Once they ordered, I'd say, thank you. Um, this is the impact you made. This is, um, how you helped Courtney and, um, her mother-in-law and, you know, we just made it all around positive and it was great. So, like I said, make sure they're invested in what they're doing. My second one was such a flop and I put in all this time, but I didn't have a hostess who was as invested in it. So it was maybe around, you know, 50, $60 and which is fine. That was more than zero, right? So, um, I don't know, it was kind of fun. I know January kind of people want to just chill out after the holidays. They don't want to throw parties. They want to get their house cleaned up. This is a good one to do. Reach out to a previous hostess. Say, hey, let's do a virtual party. You don't have to do anything except get on once a day, once every other day, and talk about the passion. It may be a success um, if, you, if you play right. So um, I enjoyed it. It was kind of fun, kind of different. Um, we had a good time. So if you have January goals to hit, go for it. Try it. See what happens. 
Marla, I think that's so genius uh, because you're absolutely right. Is that previous hostess? They already you don't have to sell that person on what One Hope is, the mission, the impact. Um, she already knew all of that. And I think a lot of times people, maybe when you're trying to book, um, maybe they have a fear of having a party because like, what are the two biggest fears that people have is like, number one, nobody's going to show up. Mm -hmm. Um, if I invite people to my house and then number two, nobody's going to buy anything. And then I'm going to feel guilty because I had this, you know, representative over to my house. And so, um, people then will say, well, I'll do, you know, can you do a virtual party for me? Um, and there's, there a lot of times asking for it out of a place of fear, um, and convenience too. Um, but if you've got a fearful hostess, um, I think that's probably what happened the second time around is like, they weren't committed to the cause. They weren't committed yeah. to the product. They didn't know. And so they weren't going to kind of like put their neck on the line with their friends to say, this is awesome. This is amazing. Uh, this wine is incredible. The impact is incredible. Uh, versus the situation where you had a host that already knew all of that. So um, definitely don't discount that. I think when you're talking to people um, and booking is like, they're a little bit nervous about putting their reputation or their neck on the line um, yeah. to partner with you, right. To stand behind a product and stand behind a rep. That's going to be fun and make it comfortable and um, engaging and informative. And, you know, is the product any good? So I think that's genius, Marla, um, a great way to tap into, um, your previous hostesses it was a lot of fun Courtney um had a lot of fun she's probably going to join my team here in the new year so yay that's awesome yeah awesome well and I would say too if you have somebody you know the other thing too is this is a great idea if you've got friends and family that um live out of state or aren't nearby right um, that they would love to support you and your right. business. Um, but you know, you probably have relatives and friends and stuff, um, out of state that you can't hop on a plane and go do a wine tasting. Um, get those people just as, as invested as Marla did with her host, um, and do a virtual tasting online. I also loved your tip Marla about going live, um, to keep people engaged in that group. Um, so just to clarify, did you set up a private group or did you set up an actual event? She set up the event. Um, she set up the event and then put me on as co-host so that I could um, talk to the the guests and stuff too. So, um, and then I could invite my own people if I wanted to. We do have quite a few mutual friends, so it was kind of nice to be able to do that. Um, yeah, the out of state, you know, I'm from North Dakota. I have so many people up there that could be doing virtual tastings. And um, I didn't even think about that one. So that was there good. You go. Um, so the, the one thing to think yeah. about when you're doing these is um, taking that route of setting up a Facebook event. Raise your hand if we can see you. How many times have you been added to a Facebook group that you did not ask to be added to? And then your, your news yeah. feed starts blowing up with, you know, buy this lash crack, your lashes will look amazing or whatever it is um, that you did not ask <laughs> to be added to these groups. Um, don't yeah. hide with your friends that way. There's a, there's, that's a pretty quick way to turn people off, in my opinion. Yes. Private event was the better way to go. And then Marla, did you um, wind up placing most of the orders for the guests or did they order off of the link? They ordered off the link. And then, you know, you always get that fun notice that says your customer placed an order. And I would get that. And then I would write on the page a thank you note and the impact that they made. So they just used the link over and over. I didn't, I didn't place any orders. So that's another very subtle thing that you did there is like once somebody placed an order going back to the event and thanking that person in that, that group. So that, that again, it's showing up to all the people in the group of, Oh gosh, Marilyn ordered. I've been thinking about ordering. I forgot about it, but now I see my next door neighbor, Marilyn ordered and I can't like have her order more than me or have her order. And I don't. So then that's going to you know, <laughs> hopefully, you know, motivate more people to go in and, and shop and purchase. So I think that's a very subtle thing. That's was probably another um, key to having a successful event. Does anybody have, fun. have any questions for Marla? Let me, um, I guess you can unmute yourselves if you want to, I won't unmute the group in case you're in loud locations, but any questions for Marla? 
Marilyn, did you have a question? Oh, I, I was trying to figure out where you were. <laughs> My, where I am? This. <laughs> no, I don't have any questions. Thank okay. You. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Marla? Okay, well, give it a try if you haven't already. Um, I think it's a great idea to close out December if you know, you're know you done doing your in-home live tasting events for this month. Great idea for January. Um, start talking to people now about being hosts, in J virtual hosts in January. Obviously, the best thing you can do is you know start kind of um, at the, the top of the ladder with, you know, hey, let's do an in-home tasting event in January. If someone pushes back and says, ah, I don't think I'm going to be ready to party in January after the holidays, then offer them a virtual wine tasting event. Uh, but you can start getting them host coaching now because, you know, everybody's going to be together with their friends and family over the next couple weeks. So if you can book some virtual events for the month of January, now is definitely the time to do it because they're going to be in their circles over the next couple weeks. Um, so they can invite and tell people about it um, and so that they can get them excited and have something to look forward to come January. So Marla, thank you so much for hopping on today and sharing um, your tips with us. I picked up some really great ideas from you and hopefully you guys did too. Um, it's always a pleasure to see you guys on tips from the top and um, keep an eye on the vine for the training schedule um, that we'll resume in january and we look forward to seeing you guys then cheers thanks katie bye guys thank you